I want to hear other people talking about Throne of Liberty. That way I can kind of like base my opinions off of it too, right? Because like my opinion of this game is like very, very hit and miss. I'm like level 35 or something like that. I haven't really played a whole lot. I was wrong. About I was Throne. wrong. Oh, I 100% oh. put my hands up and admit wrong. that I was wrong about Throne and Liberty. Wow. I'm gonna be honest. I wasn't really that hyped for this MMO. Neither was I. I genuinely thought there was no chance NCSoft could turn mm -hmm. this game from an autoplay mobile piece of shit that we was all collectively memeing on to a game that I'd actually yeah. enjoy. But I was wrong. In the past, I've said the combat in this game is clunky. Mm -hmm. It is clunky. Does it get better at yeah. level 50? Yes, a bit, but it's still clunky, and the movement at times drives me insane. How to me, I'm sorry, that matters to me more than anything. If the combat is clunky and it doesn't feel good, that's going to be my entire experience playing the game. I, that is the most important. Yes, yes. Everything else, like that, to me, that's the deal breaker. However, given the improvements the devs have made to the gameplay in such a short space of time, I think they've earned a bit of patience from myself that they'll continue to improve it further. I Is think that's fair. That's definitely fair. Him saying, hopefully they're going to make it better because they've already improved the game a lot from where it originally was. That's fair and also true. Hopefully it happens. Is the game pay to win? Yes but all Korean MMOs are pay to win. And the pay to win ceiling isn't as high as other pay to win MMOs. So, so what's the point? It's actually quite playable free to play. I was so close huh. to quitting this game, even after reaching level 50, because I wasn't really feeling the combat. At times, I do still think mm -hmm. it feels rough. And for the people who get to max level and decide to yeah. quit because they're not enjoying the gameplay, I get it. You're 100% valid, and there's a lot of improvement that needs to be made. That's so, that's where I'm at. That's why I haven't gone back and played it more. I haven't even really played it off stream, even. Me, it wasn't until I really started spamming dungeons, mastering the mechanics, and actually getting used to the pace of gameplay in Throne yeah. that something clicked, and I said to myself, "Ah, I get it now." And since that I think that one thing that this game does very well is it has like that open world experience where you can see a bunch of other people in the world. It's like one of the most simple things that I feel like so many MMOs do wrong. Point I've been enjoying the game to the point where like this. this isn't this something is really I'm just cool. going to drop after I've made my content about it. This video will be a simple format. In the first mm -hmm. half, I'll talk about all the things I like about Throne and Liberty no, so far. Yeah. And in the Rarely. second half, I'll talk about all the things I dislike about mm -hmm. the game. I'm not going to explain how the game works because I want to keep this video concise and content rich. Yeah, we know also, what Also, I'd like to give a big shout out to Canon, not only for his top tier content about mm -hmm. Throne and Liberty, but also helping me better understand the game privately in DMs. He's a cool guy and you should definitely subscribe to I his agree. channel. But before we jump into the review, do us a favor and support the content by listening to today's sponsor. Marabu Go is the latest PAL-like survival game launching on October 10th. This is a- I'm... This game, if you thought PAL World was shameless, this game is the equivalent of those bots that spam I'm the thickest 18 year old on, on OnlyFans with a link. This dude, get ready. Cross-platform open world game where you get explore ready. a world teeming with classic monsters. We're talking over 100 unique creatures with different skills and elements, all waiting to be tamed to join your team. Build your dream base, assign monsters to gather resources and automate production, How like? and don't yeah. forget to feed them and keep them well rested. Then gear up and head out into the mm -hmm. vast world, battling fierce monsters alongside your trusty monster companions. Yeah. But the real fun begins when you team up with your friends, explore Look together, at conquer challenges, and build a thriving community. Just remember, in this world, alliances can shift, so stay sharp. Oh, Marabu man. Go offers endless possibilities and exciting gameplay, whether you're on phone I've or PC. I've seen that before. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and pre-register now. Get ready to tame, build, battle, and explore in Marabu Go. The Maybe Power World should sue these guys. Monster Adventure awaits. Man. So let's jump right into it. Throne at Liberty, things I like. We'll start on the topic of visuals. The game has amazing graphics. It's the best Unreal Engine 4 MMO I've Can ever played. Can you imagine a world where Nintendo is suing Power World and Power World is suing this game? And like all of these are ongoing? 
and I think you could argue that it looks just as good or better than Black Desert Online. It looks better. Some people I say think. the visuals are generic, and I can see what they mean. They are. It definitely looks similar to other Asian MMOs, but yeah. I actually like the art style, especially with how vibrant and colorful everything is from the mm -hmm. UI to the world. Everywhere you point the camera, especially in the starting town, can be framed to just look like the most picturesque, beautiful scene I've ever seen in an MMO. Yeah, I think that also the visuals of the game are great. Uh, I don't think that they're particularly, uh, like, stylistically unique, but they are great visuals, and also it's an open-world game, and a bunch of players can be in the same area at the same place, and it's not completely dysfunctional. Just look at how good this looks. Mm -hmm. But what makes it look so good? For me, it's the scale of the environmental assets in relation to the size exactly. of your character. Yeah. It's perfect. It feels like it you're actually in a world. This combined with the game having an insanely far view distance. Mm -hmm. This was also something that I really liked about New Worlds, yeah. but I think Throne True. looks even better. I absolutely love the way armor looks in this game. Even early in the game, I thought my mm -hmm. character looked so fucking cool with the armor he had equipped. It's okay. I felt absolutely no need to buy any cash shop cosmetic, and I actually reckon the in-game gear you obtain mm -hmm. from quests, mob drops, and bosses looks straight up better. Just look at my warrior. The shield, the he got the helmet of the too. shoulder pads, the way he holds his greatsword that is just cool. so cool. Yeah. The open world multi-level dungeons in this game are also extremely mm -hmm. impressive. The level design, yeah, they depth, showed this in the, sense in the of scale in these massive dungeons is unlike anything I've seen in another MMO. It feels like something from an anime. Yeah. I also love that the game is one massive open world with no loading screens. Mm -hmm. I like the dynamic weather, seeing the trees blow in the wind, the dust particles, birds fly up as I run past them. And it's also cool how weather affects the gameplay with various effects. The game- But also, I mean, just straight up like it just looks good and it feels good to be in the world like if i look at this this looks amazing this looks like how i would want an mmo to look yeah this is great it looks good but it has no soul i think that's accurate the game has epic music kind of what you'd expect mm -hmm. from a lineage game s tier yeah. character customization all the sliders you could possibly want the game has an insanely good photo mode all that's missing is by the, the way throne and liberty actually used to be lineage 3 they renamed it and they like rebranded it after they like kind of after it went through development hell for like 10 years see to change the time of day change the weather and turn off the ui during this mm -hmm. mode and i also liked the cutscenes. a lot of them seemed pretty epic but the one i liked the most was after the tutorial mm -hmm. the seamless transition of you arriving at the mainland seeing the title screen and all the players load in very memorable yeah that's things cool. i like gameplay the mm -hmm. game runs extremely well considering the amount of players and openness of the world that's huge sometimes you do need to turn like the this graphic. is the thing is like how is, how are they able to do this but wow can't do this it's so annoying it's down a bit when there's hundreds of players on screen yeah look at this but overall i was impressed with the performance which is very important considering the pinnacle content mm -hmm. of this game is castle siege with hundreds of players yep the combat whilst clunky it also does gave feel... me a lot more confidence in ashes of creation being able to deliver the 500 v 500 uh like combat because before then i feel like nobody else is really doing that impactful the feeling of my sword connecting with the enemy the vfx and the numbers popping up does feel satisfying i think the combat in this game has quite a unique feel to it and it's quite grounded it's not perfect definitely a lot of things i dislike about it which we'll mention later on but at least it doesn't feel floaty like some mmos yeah that being said it does take a long time to get used to throne has two interesting unique i think that the combat is the worst thing about the game that's the that that is the worst thing. Everything else about the game I would say is pretty decent. But combat is it's really hard for me to get behind the combat combat mechanics that i do quite like the first being collision as a warrior i can push enemies into walls to stun them or push them off high ground with my shield rush i also really like the q block although it took me a long time to get used to mm -hmm. getting the timing perfect on this actually feels really nice and keeps you engaged for boss fights sure throne really feels like a true yeah MMO. it's kind of like the counter mechanic for lost ark but it's involved with more people which i think is good very early in the game and throughout it supports a massive number of players it brings players together mm -hmm. with regular events yep. and you're incentivized to group grind mobs unlike black desert online where you're penalized
I like that dungeons are six players instead of five. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, I just like it. It feels more social. And I like that bosses can be killed with less than six players if everyone does the mechanics perfectly. I haven't seen any boss That's enraged. also another component I really like too, is that I hate when games have like boss mechanics that you need to have six players to do, where it's like, you know, you have to stand in six runes and if one rune isn't soaked, then like everybody dies. I hate mechanics like that because they're effectively just like anti-carry mechanics. And like Lost Ark had a lot of those and it made me like fucking hate raiding mechanics yet and on numerous occasions we've managed mm -hmm. to kill bosses with only half the group due to a few people dying yeah that feels it really takes cool. a long time but it's doable things i like content and systems even though i haven't mm -hmm. gone to many conflict events yet due to not having a guild i think it's a fair system to have some events be conflict pvp enabled and some peace the same goes for open world dungeons turning full pvp at night time yeah it incentivizes players to join guilds and learn to pvp but it's not so oppressive to the point where a pve player can't enjoy the game and avoid this type of content yeah, Obviously. I think for me, I'm I'm very much the kind of guy that I don't really care about PvP in any MMO because I feel like it's always going to be bad, but the best kind of PvP in an MMO is the PvP that focuses on the spectacle of large-scale combat rather than the nuances of like which class or which player is better than the other because I feel like you're never going to have a world where a game like Overwatch, Deadlock, Counter-Strike, uh, you know, Valorant or League of Legends, like all of the actual good PvP games, those are like that. That's what's going to deliver the best, like rock, paper, scissors experience. Whereas a lot of MMOs generally don't do a very good job of that because that's not what they're designed for, right? And so I think that having like big scale PvP still is enjoyable as an MMO player the end game siege pvp and gvg stuff is insanely fun it's the best yeah, that's pinnacle content in any mmo really in my opinion like basically i like the most AV fun and, i ever had in an arena. mmo was my days of being in a hardcore siege guild back in black desert online so i'm really excited to try this part of yeah. throne I really enjoyed Throne's solo boss challenge mm -hmm. content, Tadal's Tower. Going into it, I expected it to be gear-gated, but yep. every boss is just pure mechanics, and I cleared the whole thing with potato gear as soon as mm -hmm. I hit level 50. I love that dailies stack up to five days before you're at your caps. You can literally not play for four days, then catch up on everything on day five, and you're not missing out on efficiency. That's Unlike one thing that a lot of games need to have. And I think that's like what I was talking about earlier with that other guy, is that what ends up happening is that a lot of people that are playing and they, they, they have to take a day or two off, they don't want to feel like they're behind. It's like the psychology of being behind. I hate it. It's actually huge. Yeah. Like, WoW did this in, like, Wrath with, like, the, like, you, you had weekly dungeons instead of daily dungeons. Like most Korean MMOs, Daily should be Throne like doesn't seem yeah. like it's two times. I actually think the best system is, uh, like, Honkai Star Rail, where you build up the rested uh like experience where you can cap that out it's like usually you get uh 240 but like at one third the rate you can get up to 2400 by being offline and that way you can come back and you can just absolutely juice the fuck out of a new character and play a lot if you really want to get invested into the game Dare I say, I think this might be an MMO that respects your time once you're in the flow of doing the daily Have stuff. Have stoops on that this one. This game's gear enhancement system is mm -hmm. one of the least punishing I've ever seen in a Korean MMO. Yes, there's a bit of RNG, <laughs> but it's really not much. The Ooh. least punishing I've seen in a Korean MMO. My worry, though, is that that can still be on the spectrum of punishing. Yeah. You always get something for using your resources to improve mm -hmm. your gear. There's no seemingly unreachable ceiling like in BDO. Yeah. I also think the way you obtain gear is relatively well designed too. For a Korean MMO, I was surprised that I didn't find a whole lot of inconvenience. Usually yeah. these games will have weight limit systems, almost mm -hmm. no inventory space, a lot of create problem to sell solution. Yeah, like you have to like you you have to loot a bunch of stuff and like the pet loots it if you spend money. Yeah. Like like BDO. There doesn't seem to be too much of that in this mm -hmm. game, so far anyway. I think it's cool that the chat has an auto-translator built in, and I also like that the devs are listening to I feedback. I hope that in five or ten years we can have an MMO that's officially and like 100% worldwide. I want to have an actual worldwide MMO where you have Chinese people and like uh, fucking 
people in Africa and people in like America playing together. I just I think that would be really cool. Like and seem to be faster improving mm -hmm. the game. This game is unrecognizable now compared to what it was a year and a half ago. So hats off to the devs for the changes so far. Next, let's discuss the things I dislike about Throne. Once again, starting with the visuals. I absolutely hate turning into a dog to run around. My Fucking stupid. It's so fucking dumb. It's so dumb. What is this? What the fuck? You want everybody to turn into a dog? Just put the fucking mounts in the game. Just put a fucking... Why did you need to reinvent the wheel? Stop it. It's so fucking annoying. I like it. Which... No, you don't. It sucks. I hate it. It's bad. My character looks so fucking cool in human form, but I need to transform into a shit animal and go through a weird animation. Stupid. Bro, just let me fucking sprint. It would be so much better. No, give Delete us mounts. the animal shit and give Fuck us... Fuck this. Give, give us mounts. Leave the animals in the game. I want a mount. Let me summon a fucking horse. Sprint instead. I, run, I sprint really around. don't feel boring. like the morphs add anything to the game. They do and nothing. And for me, I'd prefer if They're they just stupid. took the traditional MMO approach of mounts instead. But at the very least, they need to improve the transition from animal mm -hmm. form to human form because it's very janky. The camera zooms in, your character often desyncs on this transition, and it doesn't feel instant and responsive. I know how they can fix it. Take it out of the game. I, I solved it. Problem solved. Just take it out of the game. You don't need to worry On about it. On top of that, there's no option to enable the animal form mm -hmm. only when shift is being held. You need to double tap shift to enable and instantly disable it. So in boss fights, you often linger in animal form for a few seconds longer than you'd like, wasting stamina and as a result, not having enough... Damn, that's crazy. So this is the way the mechanic works. Man. Wow, look at this. So, so everybody is supposed to get than... inside the circle? Oh, wow. Wow. And then, because so, look like, at the health. Wasting nope, stamina damn, and as a nobody result, took any not damage. having enough stamina for a cube. That's crazy. It just feels bad. How about that? Actually seeing which target you're targeting can be difficult at times. The indicator is just this small orange bracket around an already orange nameplate. When you're getting ragged... It should by make the, the nameplate that you're targeting, it should make it bigger. 10 mobs at once you can't really glance and see mm -hmm. your target so perhaps the nameplate on your targeted enemy could benefit from some customization options yeah. things i dislike gameplay the movement when it comes to flying grappling and climbing feels awful janky animation locks and camera zooms on grappling the climbing is barely functional you'll see tons of inclines that you think you can jump over but you can't and the transition from flight to human form is not smooth the thing that makes this even more annoying is that there's so many questions and bosses in this game with jumping puzzles and mechanics that utilize the grapple and flight. So much so that you'd think this game has the movement fluidity of Mirror's Edge. It does if this game had good movement and combat fluidity, I bet it would probably be averaging 500,000 players. I'm not even kidding. I, I think it, it, it's like they're so close to it being insanely good. But the, the, the movement and the combat is just fucking terrible. Doesn't. The movement feels really shit sometimes, shit. and it's the yep, biggest true. area of improvement that I'd like to see. Now, to be fair to the devs, movement used to be even worse, mm -hmm. until recently there was inertia when changing directions. Mm -hmm. I actually had a bug where this inertia was re-enabled for my character, and it felt like absolute dog shit to just move around the world. See, this but is always a problem. Anytime that you try to apply real-life physics to games, and it makes the gameplay worse, you should always just focus on the gameplay rather than the physics. Unless it's something like Monster Hunter or something like that, uh, always focus on the gameplay. Thankfully, a relog fixed this issue, but definitely for me, one of the game's biggest yeah. weaknesses is the feeling of movement. 
As for combat, mm -hmm. there's still True. a lot of clunky combat abilities. Yep. The game has improved, but there's still more that needs to be done. Now, when Such I say clunky, clock. I'm mostly referring to a combination of your abilities and how they tie in with movement. Mm -hmm. The Warrior's Dash, for example, has a micro animation lock at the start and end of the ability. As a mage, if you begin casting a spell at max range, but the target moves even one centimeter out of range, your spell is cancelled. And without... you know, like, wow, what's crazy is that WoW fixed all the these problems 20 years ago 20 years ago they solved all of these problems that throne and liberty is having right now it's nuts any buffer zone like other MMOs usually have. There's just so yeah. many abilities with micro animation locks that root you in place. And even if it's just for half a second, mm -hmm. taking away a player's freedom of movement is what makes it feel clunky. It feels like shit. I'd happily go more in depth on this in a separate video, but people keep telling me the combat gets less clunky with I, more. I, uh, no. If it sucks at level one, why the fuck would anybody go to level 50? Elden Ring is good at the first fucking second. Classic WoW is good in the first fucking second. No, I hate, I hate it, I hate it. No, it doesn't get better. If it needs to get better, then it is bad. Think about it. PoE sucks all alone, but it gets better. I, I disagree. I think PoE is great leveling. You make those massive jumps, you get a really cool new weapon, you're doing way more damage. What the fuck? No. If the game sucks at low level, you're not going to have people that are going to invest into getting to high level. Yeah. I think they're misunderstanding you died to no, my complaint. I, didn't. I understand no, I that didn't. cooldowns get shorter, attack speed I did gets not. faster, some skills can instant cast with skill specializations. I get that. But unless there's an item that literally reads, removes the animation lock on mm -hmm. X ability, then I fail to see how progressing further in the mm -hmm. game will make it less clunky. In addition, Not Throne also has a few AoE abilities that I feel should be usable without a target, which aren't. Piercing yeah. Strike being an example with Sword and Shield, mm -hmm. and Devastating Smash plus Guillotine Blade AoE spec for Great Sword. I think the devs should try to mm -hmm. make almost every ability usable without having a target, similar to how it works in Guild Wars 2. You, like, just look at this. Like, you know I've shit on Guild Wars 2 so much, but, like, look how good this plays ability usable without this is having a so target, fluid. similar to how it works in Guild Wars 2. Just a small thing, but I dislike how so your close. character will often have their movement interrupted and blocked mm -hmm. by the smallest of rocks or inclined yeah. sticking out of the floor. Some of the arena maps I find annoying that they've incorporated the grapple mechanic to their map design, which doesn't feel good. In mm -hmm. fact, here's a good example. I fell off the map, I tried to grapple back up, good and I'm just completely bugged out for a solid Ooh. minute. I can see how this would be fun if the grappling was actually good, but unfortunately it isn't. The combat block yeah. feature can feel a bit scuffed when you're trying to solo AoE uh -huh. farm. All the circles going off at different times, you're running out of stam, and you can't get any channeled abilities off. I yeah. think in PvE you should have like two or three seconds where you can't be CC'd after a successful block. I, I think the that's true. Uh, any time that you can get stun locked by mobs, it doesn't feel good to play. Like any time that a player loses agency over their character, and they can't like recover from that, it doesn't feel good. And also, like, again, you can make logic about, like, making the game hard or, you know, punishing people for mistakes. I don't care about that. I, I think doing big AoE pulls is really fun. So if there's something that makes it to where you can't do that, then you should change it. Because it's fun. Sprint and block Straight have the up. same stamina usage, as when you're grouping up mobs to farm, you simply have no yeah. stamina left to block once they're all grouped up. It feels bad. Yeah. Additionally, it's I dislike true. that after you've killed all your enemies and should theoretically be out of combat, your travel morph still has its mm -hmm. stamina drain as if you're in combat for a solid 10 seconds after it's finished. That's just stupid, yeah. And playing melee in large-scale encounters, both PvP mm -hmm. and PvE, can feel bad sometimes because you basically need to be on top of your target to hit them. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons. Like, for example, like, wow, melee attacks do not actually have to occur whenever you are right next to the target, you can be five yards away or eight yards away in some cases and do a melee attack And wow. And it makes the combat feel more fluid. Events, you might feel like you're just running around with range DPS no, that's killing something everything separate. before you can even reach your target. 
Perhaps there should be a bit more tolerance in regards to the distance that melee need to be to use their abilities. Yeah, I Things think I'm going to play range if I come back systems. and play this again. Rerolling weapons becomes harder the longer you play. I don't mind how they've designed the skill leveling and mastery systems, but at least sell us the ability to transfer masteries or buy skill conversion books off the cash shop. It Any wouldn't... time that there's something that like locks you into a certain type of gameplay and you can't change it, I feel like that's a bad thing. Especially in a game like Throne of Liberty, where, like, being able to use different weapons is part of the game. Even be paid to like win. locking players into gameplay, I think, is like almost never a good quit. idea. If they have the option to spend money to try a different playstyle yeah. without feeling like they've wasted tons of time, then exactly. they might stick around. The auction house is extremely laggy. I hope this is just a launch issue, but it's not been very responsive since launch. Mm -hmm. I dislike the micro FPS freezes you get when you open and close the map, as well as other UI elements. Yeah. This could use some optimization. Mm -hmm. Some of the quests during the leveling process were awful. Thankfully, leveling is quick, but from level 30 to 45, it felt like every quest was either a puzzle, Ooh. a jumping puzzle, or utilized the game's awful climbing mechanics. Uh -oh. This entire- I'm level 35. Oh Part boy. Of the game would feel better if they improved the feeling of movement. The new player experience mm -hmm. in Throne is not the best in that the game does a poor job of teaching you about its progression systems. Traits, dissolving gear, and the procurement of resources, to name a few. The problem There's with a lot of MMOs is they front load the player with too much information. I think that the best game for like giving players information at the right frequency, there's two games. I think uh, New World did a great job. And I also think that Classic WoW does a great job. The problem is that whenever you get introduced into a new game and then they give you seven different menus and systems that you have to learn within the first three hours of playing the game, the average person isn't going to be able to retain all of that information and they're not going to remember it all. And so I think that spacing out progression systems more and then allowing players to kind of gain a degree of mastery over one progression system before introducing them to the next one is a better way to not overwhelm players and also to make them feel like they're understanding what they're doing more. Because I think that what happens is that players might forget about a system and then they'll keep leveling. And it's like, well, yeah, you, you front loaded them like an hour of fucking content, basically. And they have to remember all of this and like keep up with it at the same time. And they just started the game. There's no way that's going to happen. And so people get overwhelmed and it's not a good experience. A lot of pitfalls for new players to mess up their characters, especially for those that don't watch YouTube guides. Yeah, exactly. And finally, the game is pay to win. It's not oh. BDO levels of pay to win, and a free to play player could definitely play the game, get geared, and enjoy That's it. That's too bad. It's not going to be as fast as a pay to win player, but it's achievable. Finally, here's a small list of improvements I want for Throne of Liberty. Forgive me if some of these are already in the game on Korea. I don't play KR, mm -hmm. so I don't know what's coming soon. Considering that a lot of the in-game armor is just as good or better than cash shop cosmetics, uh -huh. let us collect the appearance of armor that we've obtained in the lithograph book, so we can then use that as cosmetics too. Oh, I okay, would like so more than three yeah, ability loadouts. Three is not enough. You have multiple mm -hmm. for PvP, PvE, solo, small scale, large scale, yeah. and so on. Remove animation locks on more abilities. Overhaul the movement system. We need improvements to the grappling, jumping. That's what they need to do. Like all, uh, that's all I want. Fix the movement, fix the combat, I play the game. That's where I'm at. As well as smoother transitions in and out of morph, make it easier to re-roll, sell weapon mastery transfers on the cash shop if you want. The game's already pay to win, so giving people the option to pay to re-roll is completely fine. That's true. Make a help yeah. chat or buddy system to help new players avoid mistakes and mm -hmm. common pitfalls. Add I think that, like, I don't think they should add a buddy system. I think that instead of that, they should just make it so new players can't make mistakes. Like, it's one of the biggest unnecessary L's I think PoE takes is that they lock new players into a build. And, like, you know, Settlers of Calgar, like, they kind of, like, tried to change this now that gold can be used to respec. But, like, if you're a new player and you get to Katava and, like, you don't have any fire resist and it keeps one-shotting you, and you're bad, right? So you're not able to avoid all the attacks uh, because you're, again, new. And, like, you can't respec because you don't have orbs of regret because they're so expensive. You're just kind of like fucked, right? You're bricked. And so what's the person going to do then? They're going to quit the game. Why? Basically, like, the harder you punish someone, the harder someone is going to try to not get punished. 
what what is the outcome of that the outcome of that is that they're not going to uh they're not going to try to learn things and figure them out themselves they're just going to look everything up on on a youtube guide and i think when people feel like they have to look something up on a video on a on a website instead of actually playing and learning the game themselves the game has failed so like I think that more, like, instead of, like, helping players not make mistakes, make it to where the mistakes can't happen. Ability to change the time of day, change the weather, and to turn off the UI during photo mode. Add a small duration of CC immunity yeah. following a successful block. Give us more customization options to help us see which enemy we have mm -hmm. targeted. And finally, delete the furry stuff. Get yes! rid of it out of the yes! game. Yes! And send yes! whoever yes! decided yes! it was a cool idea over to Square Enix to go work on Final Fantasy XIV. True! Overall, it took me quite a while That's to a get fact. used to it, but I'm finally enjoying Throne of Liberty. And it definitely seems like a game that will appeal to me Absolutely. in the long term provided the devs can keep improving it and they don't ramp up the pay to win ceiling to be any higher i hope they do as an xbdo player an old school runescape enjoyer someone whose best mmo memories are those large scale epic mm -hmm. pvp encounters i think this game is made for someone like me but i also think throne has a lot more mass appeal than black desert online considering the pve side of the game is actually really fun and accessible yeah, with some satisfying boss mechanics that being said, this game will not I feel be like AoE farming in BDO looks way cooler than AoE farming in this game, though. Like, just like the farming experience of BDO is really cool. Like, you're like, gathering up all the mobs, you're fucking like, blowing them all up, right? But, like, one thing this game has that BDO doesn't have is numbers. Like, I'm a big guy for numbers. I want to see how much damage I'm doing. For everyone, if you can't get used to the at times clunky gameplay, then you're 100% justified and valid, because my experience is that it isn't something that really gets much better, but you do get used to it and you learn to appreciate its quirks. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Throne and Liberty so far, and if you enjoyed the vid then help us out with a like. What I'll probably do in a few months time is follow up this video with one titled Throne and Liberty after 1000 hours or something, so Damn. subscribe and keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. I think that if a game has clunky and bad movement and combat, this is a great video, by the way. Give it a like, give him a sub. I've watched Lazy Peon ever since he had like fucking 20k subs. He was making WoW videos, right? Been a very, very long time. There's the video. If you don't have combat and movement that feels good, why the fuck would you want to play the game? Like, why would you get invested or anything like that? Why would you, like, why would you think to yourself, this game that doesn't feel good, I want to invest 50 hours into it to figure out what's going to happen in the game like the freedom of movement and the ability to, to do combat that feels good means more than anything because that is the one commonality that every single person in the game will experience so if the combat and the movement feels bad that is 90 percent of what you're doing in the game you're moving around and you're fighting things basically right so if that's bad, the game's bad. If they fix that, this game can be massively successful.